So welcome to the meeting. Uh, for those of you who haven't attended before, I'm Bob Birch uh, with the Network Literacy Community of Practice. And this is uh, our third meeting of the Twitter cohort. Um, so we're about halfway through. You have a couple of weeks of work still to go. And uh, the goal is in two weeks from now, uh, when we have our wrap-up meeting, um, you'll be set to uh, become a regular uh, contributor to the Twitter network and, and be following lots of people and getting some, uh, some use uh, out of Twitter as a professional development and personal learning tool and, and maybe uh, just for some fun as well. As always, uh, you're welcome to ask questions uh, at any time during the meeting. Uh, you can post those to the chat pod. If you do want to share your voice, uh, we'd love to hear from some of you. Uh, I'll just ask you to raise your hand if you do want to use your microphone, and then uh, you can click the talk button uh, if you have set up your audio uh, to speak uh, to the room. So uh, I've got a few things that I want to share with you today. We had some questions uh, on Twitter uh, about shortening links, so I have some information I'll share with you about that, and we can sort of uh, clear some of those questions up, hopefully. And uh, then we'll just uh, open it up and, and have you ask questions and talk about your experience uh, this past week. So I'll go through a few slides here. Just a reminder again that um, we really want to get everybody um, on the uh, Twitter Cohort 2013 list so that we're all connected uh, with uh, one another. Um, and uh, you can see the link there on the screen. Um, that is uh, where you'll find that list, and you can see if you're on it. There's 90 members on there now, so we're pretty close to having everybody in the cohort on the list, but there's still a few missing. So if your Twitter account's not on the list, you can uh, drop it in the chat, and we'll get you added to the list, or you can send me an email uh, if you want to do that uh, as well. I'll put my email in the chat here. There we go. Sorry, to, I'm not very good at typing and talking at the same time. And as I'm as I'm speaking here, I'm also gonna uh, get one of our other guides here, moderator privileges. There we go. So um, let's make sure that everybody gets added to the list, and that list will stay out there. Um, we'll we'll keep that list out there so uh, future Twitter cohorts and other folks can find the list of people who have been through this uh, learning experience. So shortening and sharing links, that was uh, one of the assignments uh, from this last week was to uh, find some web resources and actually share them on Twitter. And I'll share some of the tweets that uh, went out last week, uh, different ways of doing that. But um, we might have not have done uh, the best job that we could talking about how to shorten links. Of course, you're limited to 140 characters in Twitter, so sometimes pasting an entire long string of a, uh, of a web link uh, uses up all your characters. So one of the things that uh, we do to, to alleviate that is to shorten links using a, a URL shortener. Um, and I'm just going to cover a few ways that that can happen. So actually in the Twitter, uh, in the Twitter client, so this is just twitter.com. Like you go to twitter.com and you log in. We're not in Hootsuite here or any third-party uh, client. Um, Twitter will actually shorten any link that you paste into a tweet here uh, to 19 characters. So it'll only take up 19 characters no matter how long it is. So you can see here I've, I've typed a little uh, content in here and then pasted the full link uh, in there. Now that full link wasn't longer than 19 characters, so it's, it's maybe not super obvious uh, how it gets shortened. But no matter how long that link is, uh, Twitter will auto-shorten that for you down to uh, 19 characters. So if you're posting through Twitter.com, it's a pretty straightforward process. You just paste your link into your tweet, and Twitter shorten it, shortens it for you. Thanks, Steve. I, I've got your Twitter ID. Um, and welcome to uh, your first live uh, Twitter cohort uh, session. Um, so you can just paste your links right into your tweet when you're tweeting via Twitter. The other thing I want to show you here is how we do it in Hootsuite, um, because this is a little bit different. If you paste your full link into Hootsuite when you're tweeting from that client, uh, then it's not going to 
shorten it for you automatically. It'll actually post the whole link and it'll use up your characters. Um, in, as I'm watching the chat there, Steve noticed that some links have been blocked by Twitter as spam and, and Twitter has been trying to do a good job of that, of, of making sure that uh, the links are proven safe, I guess, um, so that people don't open themselves up to viruses. Um, I'd be curious, Steve, if you if you know anything about what links are being blocked or if any of our other guides uh, who are on the call uh, know that. Um, maybe they can add their thoughts uh, to the chat. So, and Donna's asking, she said she typed the link and it wasn't shortened. Do I need to copy and paste instead? No. Um, it sh you shouldn't have to do that if you do that in Twitter. You might not see it as shortened when you type it in your tweet, but once you send it, Twitter will auto-shorten it to 19 characters. Now, if you want it shorter than 19 characters, then you might have to look at using some kind of shortener, uh, URL shortener, like uh, in Hootsuite, they have the ow.ly. There's some other URL shorteners out there as well. Um, one that I use is bit.ly, B-I-T dot L-Y. So just go to HTTP colon slash slash, like you're going to a website and type B-I-T dot L-Y. You know, that's a, that's a URL uh, shortener. Uh, that's interesting. Thanks, Steve, for sharing that link. That's interesting that it's a, uh, um, you know, that it's a, a land-grant university uh, EDU website and Twitter uh, was marking that as spam. Uh, interesting. Um, back to the slide, and I'm, I'm going to try and keep up with the chat as much as I can as well because uh, we found out the chat isn't uh, being included uh, in the recording, at least on the YouTube recording. Um, and so I'll try and uh, read the chat out loud for people who are listening on the recording as well. So, you know, if, if you're doing it in Hootsuite, you can see I've started to type my uh, message in there. And then you see that link area at the bottom. Um, and uh, you can just paste your link in there. And when you do that, then click the shrink uh, button right next to that. And once you do that, you'll see that it gets inserted into the tweet there um, with a shortened URL. And, and Hootsuite uses the ow.ly. Uh, Peggy is asking about the uh, extension shortener at Extension Research Network Learning. I don't know much about that, Peggy. I don't know if anybody else uh, in the meeting knows about that. Um, but yeah, uh, Polly is mentioning there that Ohio State has its own uh, shortening site. Um, and so uh, some of the some of the land grant uh, universities have uh, those sort of custom shorteners uh, as well uh, for that branding reason. So shortening a link in Hootsuite again, just add it to that add a link area, click the shrink button, and that will shorten it down there. And you can see that's um, a, a pretty short link there. Uh, Denise mentioned that Bitly has some some analytics that you can get when you shorten links uh, in Bitly, and um, sorry about that. That person's not getting their call answered. I usually remember to unplug that phone. Okay, so um, uh, what I want to show you next is are some of those analytics that um, are available both in Twitter and in Hootsuite. Um, that you can sort of use to track some of these links. So in Hootsuite, to access those analytics, you can see on your, and, and I'm looking at this, this is a screen capture from the web uh, version of Hootsuite, not, that, not an app or anything like that. And over here on the, on the left-hand side, you'll see the little uh, bar graph button. That's the analytics uh, button for uh, Hootsuite. And there's quite a bit of stuff uh, there. Uh, here's the menu, so you can look at different things you know, what they call engagement, and of course, engagement uh, in terms of measuring engagement, different uh, social media and different people have a different idea of what you should measure and if you can measure engagement, but they've got some different things uh, that are available there. But since we're talking about links, I wanted to look, I wanted to point out the, the ow.ly click summary um, and the URL click stats that are down there as well. Those will really show you like who's clicking these links or how many people, I shouldn't say who is, but how many people are clicking uh, my links when I post them uh, to my tweets uh, via Hootsuite. 
so if you click that link summary there, all you have to do, it just gives you a little idea of what your report's going to look like, and you choose your profile here. You can see I've chosen mine. And then just click Create Report. And what you get back, um, I didn't screen capture. Let me go back a slide here and show you. You get this you know, line graph and a nice pie chart. It's all colorful and stuff like that. Um, but more what I am interested in is how many clicks did uh, my tweets get. So I can kind of get an idea. It's like, what are people actually uh, clicking on? And, and what is it about how I phrase something or a hashtag that I've used or, um, you know, maybe just the subject matter that I'm tweeting about? Is there something about that tweet that uh, resulted in more, more clicks um, that maybe I should uh, duplicate the next time I'm trying to get people to click on stuff uh, in uh, in a tweet. So this is just a screen capture of that of that Auli click summary report with my most popular uh, links uh, and at least recently. And so here are um, you know 16 clicks. You can see 12 clicks, and then I can see what tweet that uh, click, that generated those click-throughs. Um, just keeping an eye on the, um, on the chat over here. I think Sonia is answering a question from Donna, and I, gotta, I have to find your question, Donna. I missed it somewhere. Oh, and that was a question about copying and pasting or typing it straight in and uh, into a tweet and having it shorten it. Um, and Sonia is just uh, repeating what I what I said about the uh, Hootsuite uh, shrink box. So that's that's maybe a, a little bit easier way to make sure that your link has been shrunken. So you can get analytics via Twitter as well. It's a little bit more confusing than in Hootsuite. In Hootsuite, you just have your analytics button. You can click on the reports that you want and all that kind of stuff. Twitter analytics are uh, relatively new, and they're tied to Twitter advertising. Um, so that's why I say it can be a little bit confusing. But I think if you see these slides, you'll, you'll see that there's a way definitely to work through it. So if you just go to analytics.twitter.com, it's going to ask you to sign in with your Twitter username or email and password um, to log into your Twitter account. And this is where it gets a little bit, little bit confusing because the first thing that you see there, it says, welcome to Twitter advertising. And you might think, well, I don't want to advertise on Twitter and I don't have, I don't have a budget to advertise on Twitter. Um, but don't worry about that. Um, you can go ahead and click that Get Started button. Um, and the next screen that you're going to see uh, is going to be this screen that asks you to promote your tweets or promote your account. Um, but hidden up at the top in the menu up there, You'll see next to campaigns and creatives at the very top, you've got a button called analytics. And if you click on that, you'll get that drop down menu uh, to look at some different kinds of analytics uh, for your Twitter account. And you don't have to sign up to promote your tweets or promote your account or buy advertising uh, with Twitter. So um, since we're talking about links, again, I, I went ahead and, and uh, did a screen capture for the timeline activity because that's where your click-throughs on links are recorded. So analytics up here at the top and then timeline activity. And this is what you get. So you get some idea of mentions and follows and unfollows um, and those kinds of things over time. And then down below that, you can see uh, your recent tweets and um, take a look at not just uh, the clicks, uh, which are um, recorded there as well. Let me find one. Anyone that has a URL in it. So if you see uh, any, well, the second one down there, the first one down even has a, has a link in it. And you can see it says one click after it. So it had, it had one click at the time that I ran this. Um, so Elizabeth's saying she doesn't seem to have those options across the top. And the way that I got those was I logged in, I clicked the Get Started for uh, Twitter advertising. Let me back up and show the slides. So click Get Started here. I don't have those options at this point when I just log in. And then click Get Started. And you should have those up there. If you don't, I don't know. I might have to try and 
check that and see if uh, we can replicate that problem, Elizabeth. I'm not sure why that wouldn't show up for you. Um, it did this morning for me, I guess. But we'll, maybe one of the guides can uh, try and pull that up on their own in another browser and see if they're, if they're getting the same behavior. And maybe I was just lucky. So you've got your clicks here when you look at your timeline activity and also favorites, retweets, replies. So you get a little bit more, um, a little bit more uh, data in the Twitter analytics, at least in this report, all compiled together. And in Hootsuite, those things are, are maybe separated out more. But either one should, should work pretty well for you if you're just trying to get an idea of, you know, are these tweets making any difference? Are people clicking on the links? Um, you know, you, you'll get an alert if you're getting something favorited or something retweeted or replied. A lot of times you get a notification uh, for that if you have your Twitter account set up to get those notifications, but you don't know uh, if people cl actually click the link. So that's uh, sort of a nice deal to be able to uh, do that either in the Twitter analytics or in your Hootsuite analytics, get an idea of who clicked the link or, or how many people clicked the link. Any questions about link shortening or the analytics, anything like that? If you do have questions, go ahead and post them to the chat pod. If you want to share your voice, just uh, raise your hand and uh, I'll call on you and you can click the talk button. All right. So a couple of other things I want to uh, to look at here. One was um, sharing links. We asked you to find some web resources, shorten the URLs, and post a tweet promoting the resource uh, this week. And um, a few of you did do that. Um, so I wanted to share some of those some of those tweets. Um, I picked this one from Eric because uh, he had to correct his URL like I did earlier this morning. I messed up the URL uh, in a tweet and had to, had to tweet out a correction. And that um, is connected, or, or sort of reminds me that there was another question online about how much should you edit or correct a tweet. Um, you know, if you make a uh, grammatical error or a misspelling in a tweet, should you send another one with the correction? And uh, my answer to that person who uh, asked that question on Twitter was no. Um, to me, it's sort of uh, like chat, as long as uh, the typos or the, the grammar doesn't uh, interfere with um, the content so people can still understand it, um, then I wouldn't bother doing a correction. But one of the, one of the times that I did say, you know, this, when I would correct, uh, make a correction is if I had put the wrong link in something or if I tried to mention someone uh, by their Twitter username and I messed up the Twitter uh, username. So those are some times where you might want to make a correction like Eric did here. So I'm, I'm trying to keep up. I know some people are struggling with seeing those drop down <laughs> options uh, on the Twitter analytics. I'm not sure what's up there. Um, but maybe somebody can do some research offline and, and see if we can get that answered during the meeting today. I see Donna's question about, do you put the hashtag cohort at the beginning, middle, or end of the tweet? It really depends. Um, yeah, I use hashtags uh, in two ways. One, you can use them you know, actually as part of your sentence, uh, as part of your tweet of the actual content, um, or you can use them as sort of keywords at the end. So you can see in Eric's case here, he put the hashtag at the end because it was just a way of sort of having a keyword. And, um, and uh, drawing attention to his tweet from the, uh, you know, among the Twitter cohort group. But you could use that hashtag um, as a sentence uh, in your tweet. Um, you know, for instance, if I was trying to, you know, I think I sent a tweet on Friday about um, it being a little bit quiet or is it quiet or just me. Um, I didn't say is it quiet or just me and then add Twitter cohort at the end. If I remember right, I think I said, hey, Twitter cohort, as because I was addressing you. But instead of just typing Twitter and cohort, I put the hashtag uh, in front of it and used it in, replace the, in, in place of Twitter space cohort. And I'll do that a lot of times, too, for those of us who, are, who do cooperative extension work. 
there's a cooperative extension hashtag. It's, it's hashtag C-O-O-P-E-X-T. So instead of typing out extension or cooperative extension in my sentence, in my tweet, and then putting the co-op EXT hashtag at the end, I'll just put the co-op EXT hashtag in place of the words cooperative extension or extension. So there's really, a, Victor's right, there's no steadfast rule. I put the hashtags at the end if I'm using them as sort of an addendum, as a keyword, um, you know, in addition, outside of, um, outside of my, um, uh, the tweet, you know, the, the part that makes sense. Let's see, trying to keep up with, trying to keep up with some of the, um, some of the chat here, and Sony's got some resources in there for people who are having trouble with Twitter analytics, and I'm just not sure what's going on there. Let's see. So here's another tweet sharing uh, web content uh, inside of a tweet. Um, and uh, Paula's uh, tweeting there about, about an article about gardening. A couple of interesting things about it. Um, one is you can see that uh, the URL is shortened, um, but it's a custom URL shortener. And sometimes that will just happen to you. Um, and uh, I don't know if any of the guides want to jump in and, and have more information about that, but in terms of a big media company like The Guardian, which is a newspaper in, in Great Britain, um, a big media company will sometimes be able to control that. So even if I uh, you know, shorten that URL myself and then post it to Twitter, uh, The Guardian has some relationship with Twitter where they, they make that a custom shortened URL. Um, your analytics will still track, as far as I know. I think that still works. But it, they just kind of uh, clean it up and, and make it uh, branded uh, for their company uh, as that post. So that can happen a couple of ways. You know, one is, in this case, I think that, um, and if, I don't know if Paula is on, she could tell us more about how she shared this. But this appears to me like that maybe this tweet was, um, created using a share button on the Guardian's website or something like that, and then edited to include the Twitter cohort hashtag. And the reason I might I'd say that is the via at Guardian. Um, Paula easily could have typed that herself. There would be nothing wrong with typing that that way yourself. But um, sometimes when you click a share button or tweet this button from a web page or from a news article on the web, it'll generate a tweet that, that sort of looks like that. So. Um, that might be the reason for the branded shortened URL and the fact that the mention of the newspaper is there, which wouldn't necessarily always be there. Let's see. So Dustin just put a screenshot on Twitter of his analytics, so that's good. It must be working for him. Or maybe it's a screenshot of it not working. So if someone wants to go to Twitter and check that out, maybe we can figure it out. Okay, thanks. Um, here's a tweet from Donna, um, which is I wanted to bring up, not you know partly because it's uh, it has some links in it, but also because it it goes back to uh, our last meeting when we were talking about different ways of tweeting, retweeting, modified tweets, all of those kinds of things. And this is a quote uh, tweet, um, which is a way of retweeting where you just you have quotation marks around that tweet. Um, you're still mentioning the person even though you don't have the RT. Um, at the beginning. Um, but the nice thing about this quote is that um, it separates what Denise said from what Donna said in a very clean way because because of the quotation marks. And that was a question, another question that came across Twitter uh, in the past week was how do you separate when you're retweeting what someone else is saying uh, as opposed to what you're saying. Um, if you're if you're directly quoting someone and you're not changing their tweet, you can use the quote tweet. You can put quotation marks around it, um, and then you can follow with what what you had to say. Um, but if you are modifying that tweet, then that becomes harder to do because when personally when I modify someone's tweet, even if it doesn't affect the meaning, I don't like to put quotation marks around it because it's not a direct quote anymore. So that's where I would use the MT at the beginning. And so what I do in that case, if I'm doing a modified tweet, uh, retweet, 
and I want to add my own comments is I put two uh, greater than signs. I don't know where that came from. I either picked it up from somebody else or it's a, it's a common practice on Twitter that I, I just sort of fell into. But the two greater than signs sort of um, as a separator to show, okay, I'm going to, this is, we're stop reading what Denise is saying now and now this is what I'm saying so that there's some separation there. Again, just like uh, Victor said about the hashtags, no hard fast rule there. Some people do it different ways. You might use a colon or you might you know, use some other way to separate that. Um, what you're saying from what you're, you're quoting or indirectly quoting uh, through a modified tweet. Um, but it is important to have some separation so people can tell what's your voice and what is uh, the voice of somebody uh, that you're retweeting or quoting. Okay, thanks Denise. Denise is clearing up the Twitter analytics thing, saying that um, that you have to sign up for Twitter ads, which I did not have to do this morning, but maybe they are rolling it out only to certain accounts at this point. So sorry if I jumped the gun uh, on that. Uh, I might be able to access it or some people might be able to access it through their accounts and others might not be able to. Um, but you still have your analytics uh, through Hootsuite if you want to if you want to access those that way. So a couple more tweets I wanted to uh, point out. Here's um, uh, here's an, an example of what I what I was just talking about where you have a modified tweet um, and then you want to add your own uh, voice to it. Um, so that's one reason I wanted to bring this up. The other reason I wanted to bring it up is just uh, that you can see how Marissa uh, was able to shorten Alda's tweet. So the, the tweet down here uh, is Alda's original tweet. Um, and of course, if you, were, if you want to retweet that, um, I don't know how many characters that is. I didn't count them up. But if you want to retweet that, you would have to add RT or, or, you know, quotation mark El, uh, Elda Norris or at Eldini Norris um, first. That would add some characters. And then if you wanted to make a comment on it, now you're adding even more characters and you're going to be over 140. So Marissa was able to take um, what Alda wrote and I think also keeping the sense of it, the context of it, um, and tracking the conversation to use a modified tweet to share that, and then you can see Marissa is using the two greater than signs, um, as I usually do, to add her own voice and ask the question, why the difference? And so we've got some stuff going on in the chat as we're trying to figure out the Twitter analytics thing. Uh, Victor is recommending uh, that TweetReach has uh, some analytics. Um, Elizabeth asked if that's free. And there is a free option for, for TweetReach, and I've run it before. Um, it's sort of a nice, uh, TweetReach has some different tools, but the one that I've used is to just kind of track uh, a particular tweet um, and see how far it's kind of spread through the network, um, looking at, at one tweet at a time. So. Okay, and Denise is saying that she found it, the analytics um, up in the left-hand corner where I found them earlier this morning, and um, it looks like Twitter's just messing with us, uh, the Twitter cohort. Uh, they must have known I was going to share that information and decided to move it around on us and try and confuse as many people as possible. Okay. So here's another uh, tweet um, that I wanted to, to share with you. And the reason I brought this one up is it's a good example. Uh, Denise is using the hashtag as a word in her, in her tweet, in the part of her tweet that's supposed to make sense. And that's what I was talking about uh, earlier. Instead of typing the complete guide to Twitter hashtags for education, sharing the link, and then hashtagging at Twitter cohort, and then adding the hashtag education at the end, uh, you can shorten your tweet um, by just replacing the word education with the hashtag education. And so that's an example of there's the hashtag in the middle with another one 
at the end, and the one in the middle is there because it's it's a word that you know is part of the uh, the part of the tweet that makes sense. Um, so uh, Polly's asking about um, having Hootsuite embedded uh, into Twitter, and um, I'm not exactly sure uh, what makes up uh, getting that, but I do know that you have to uh, install the Hootlet um, add-on in either Firefox or Chrome. I use Chrome, and so I've installed that Hootlet um, thing. Uh, what the Hootlet uh, tool does when you install that in Chrome is it gives you a button uh, in your browser so that if you want to tweet something, um, you're looking at a web page and like, hey, this is interesting. I wanna, I wanna tweet this. It just has a button that you can, you can uh, tweet it through Hootsuite by using that Hootlet button, and not just tweet it, but you could share it to other social media as well, as you, as you guys know from using Hootsuite, um, that uh, Hootsuite supports other social media platforms and accounts. So that's a, it's an easy way to share web content. You just have that button in there. So I think. Polly, uh, what's happening is because I have that Hootlet installed and I open Twitter in Chrome where I have the Hootlet installed, that's why I'm getting that Hootsuite button. And um, you get it a few other places in Twitter uh, and in Facebook as well if you open those uh, in the same browser where you've got that installed. Um, Steve is telling everyone to read Anne Adrian's blog post and I couldn't agree more. Um, I tweeted it um, with the netlet hashtag uh, earlier today, or just look at my timeline if you want to find it. Uh, Steve has shared the URL in there as well. I won't share that for our, uh, our people listening to the recording, but I will tell you that because it's a long URL, folks, but, um, but you can find Anne's blog at blog.anneadrian, A-N-N-E-A-D-R-I-A-N.com. Um, and you should definitely read that. It mentions Twitter, of course, which is what we're all here talking about, and uh, has some great insights about cooperative extension reach as well. So I hope you guys will read that. Okay, so um, that's the stuff that I wanted to share. I want to take a second. Actually, I'm going to go back one slide here before we get distracted by all that text on the on the page and see if anybody wanted to sort of share their experience um, uh, tweeting out web resources. Um, if you want to use your microphone, please uh, click the hand raise button and I'll, I'll call on you and you can uh, speak to the room. Otherwise, you have questions or comments about uh, your experience uh, with Twitter this past week, uh, you can put them in the chat pod. So um, not hearing any hand raises, so um, I'll watch the chat pod here. And um, you see that Donna uh, is saying she got Twitter installed on her smartphone. That makes it a lot easier to tweet. Um, that's how Twitter was originally created, was as, a, um, as an SMS uh, platform or to work with SMS. That's texting, uh, if you guys don't know about what SMS is, but that's texting on you know, any phone, any uh, mobile phone. Um, and so that's that's the reason behind the 140 character limit, um, and it's also uh, the way it was sort of uh, uh, you know created with that in mind. So it, it does make it a lot easier to tweet. And if you didn't see it, um, maybe somebody can uh, track that link down um, and post it in the chat pod. But John Dorner, uh, one of our guides, uh, posted. Uh, a link to the uh, Twitter support uh, article about how to use your mobile phone, uh, how to use SMS for tweeting. You don't need to have a smartphone and install the app. You don't need to be at a computer. You can actually tweet uh, using texting. Um, and John posted an article about that. Um, so Aaron's talking about struggling to find content that is meaningful enough um, to tweet. Um, a couple of things about that, um, because Aaron, you say it stops me from tweeting 
regularly. I think that is probably the biggest adjustment um, for new Twitter users um, and social media users. If, like me, you have a background in academia um, or communications, um, or, you know, I was an English major in college, and so we're used to editing so much, you know, it's, you know, nothing's done until it's been revised, you know, 15 times um, and reviewed and peer-reviewed and all that kind of stuff. So it really is um, sort of a behavioral adjustment um, to sort of, you know, give weight to something that is a uh, top-of-the-mind thought um, or, or something that, you know, a, a lot of times when I first started tweeting, I would, I would not tweet something because I would think to myself, oh, somebody else smarter than me probably has already tweeted that, so it's, I'm wasting people's time. Um, and I think the, th the thing that you need to do is, um, and I would say the same thing about if you're interested in blogging or doing any kind of social media, is to not worry about what other people think. Uh, I know that sounds kind of crazy, especially if we're serving uh, customers and clients out there, but um, to be doing it for yourself. So if you're sort of looking at stuff, Aaron, you're like, hey, I just want to, this is interesting, this interesting blog post, I want to save this for later, uh, send it as a tweet instead of bookmarking it or whatever. Just tweet it. And then you can go back to your, your Twitter timeline and, and find it. Um, it's maybe not the most efficient way to keep track of those things, but it's one way to keep track of them. And when you're doing that, now you're sharing it with your network, um, and they may or may not get value out of it. Um, but, but you've shared it. Yeah. So, you know, it's sort of the old cliche, you know, if, if one person, you know, gets a benefit out of this, um, they're not going to get a chance to get a benefit out of it if you don't actually share it. And so they might not find that. The other thing I'll say about finding meaningful content is it's not just about Twitter. Um, you know, uh, when we're talking about finding meaningful content, you have to sort of build that into your workflow. Um, so using a feed reader, um, finding, searching out blogs uh, and following them, um, having lots of ways that lots of information is coming into you, um, and then sort of filtering through that, you might be able to find some more quality stuff. So. Um, those are some things that I would think about. But thanks, thank you, Aaron, for sharing that. That's absolutely something I think that many, many people struggle with when they get into um, sort of this, um, the idea of communicating what I call in the flow, in real time, um, you know, that it's an adjustment. Um, so Steve's saying he's using Tweetcast, Tweetcaster on his smartphone uh, and tablet. That's a good tool that some people might want to take out. Um, Sony has got uh, some uh, some instructions here for people who might ha have the analytics menu. Open Twitter and click on the cog button in the upper right. Choose Twitter ads and sign in. And then hopefully the analytics option will display. Let me know if that works. So um, hopefully uh, folks who are listening to um, that. Uh, Elizabeth is already in tweet reach and says, holy cow, that's great. Um, I, I think that's a good, I hope that's a good holy cow, uh, Elizabeth. Um, so Aaron's saying that the plenty to share that's funny, silly, for fun, not really work appropriate. I don't know your network or your, your subject matter, Aaron, so I can't speak to that, it, you know, that there is available, but I mean, um, it's, it's hard to find a subject that there's not some uh, quality content out there uh, to share about that subject on the, on the internet, right? And that's the kind of stuff that we share on Twitter is, is stuff when we're resharing stuff or sharing web resources, uh, that's what we're talking about. There's conversations going on all over uh, about any kind of topic. Um, I'm starting to get into reading some some legal blogs. I am not a lawyer. I, I have barely a passing interest uh, in the law um, from watching Law and Order or something. Um, but uh, an opportunity to connect with a lawyer uh, through a network literacy uh, educational opportunity. I started reading his blog and getting connected to some of those. You know, so every professional community has that conversation going on. The hard part is how do you tap into that conversation and get that information flowing to you um, in order to find it. And so that's one of the things that we've said about Twitter. 
I've said about Twitter, I shouldn't attribute it to my other uh, fellow guides, but that I've said about Twitter, um, I think from the very beginning, and I might have shared this in our first meeting, is that um, when people come and say, it's like, I can't, there's nothing decent on Twitter, I can't get good information on Twitter, the problem isn't Twitter, the problem is your network, right? If it's, if, if you're not getting stuff, if you're not getting enjoyment out of it or learning out of it or professional development out of it, or whatever it is your, your goal is for Twitter, that's all about the network because there are tons of people out there. I don't remember what the latest number is. Maybe someone wants to post it uh, to the chat. But we are talking about a lot of people as resources. And if you can connect to the right people, you can get uh, useful information, the kind of information that you want to. Um, Steve is talking about using Feedly as an RSS feed, feed reader. I use that as well. Um, very handy tool. Um, still some people having trouble getting uh, some analytics. Uh, I've got two retweets, retweets from Polly Saint. She got retweets from Food, Ag, and Byron College Dean, and that analytics score really jumped. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Uh, that will that will help when somebody who's got a big following uh, retweets you. Um, so that really helps reach some more Twitter users. And I see Karen is saying she's got. Um, uh, the same problem as Aaron trying to find that information. Um, if you, if you, if you, maybe you guys have seen this or not seen it, but um, the resources uh, I think that were shared, I want to say in week one, yeah, in the week one meeting uh, of the Twitter cohort about just you know doing searches, getting connected. You know, if you want to start trying to find particular resources that you're interested in, you know, first you have to determine what is it. Right? We, you can't just um, say, well, I'm interested in professional information. Well, professional information about what? What do you want to learn? What do you want to share about? You know, who do you want to be connected to? So having a clear idea about that is, is important. And I, if you're really struggling as a place to start, go to Google, google.com, <laughs> type in the keywords into your search, and up at the top, you have a menu. Um, you might have to sort of search for it because Google's moved around recently, and I think you might have to click the More button or something. You'll get a list of, of saying, you know, instead of searching the whole web, you could search just news or just images, and one of them is blogs. So you can type in some search terms and then say, show me only blogs with these search terms. That's a way to find blogs that you could subscribe to and have fed into a feed reader or blogs that might have a Twitter account that posts a tweet uh, every time they post a new blog post. And so that's, that's one way to sort of start building that network. Some of the other tips that we shared about building that network, like look at your bookshelf. If you have a bookshelf in your office, I have a very small one. Um, but if you've got professional development books on there, and you know about leadership or working efficiently or whatever it might be, start go to twitter.com and search for those authors' names and see if they have a Twitter account. And follow them. You are interested enough to buy their book or to maybe have their their book given to you by a superior or something. Um, so you know, search them out and follow them on Twitter. If there's people that you have seen speak at a conference and you know, that person was really interesting, they shared good information, find them on Twitter. That's how you sort of, it takes time. It's definitely, you know, we've, we saw a tweet about gardening. It's not just scatter seeds and, you know, just a handful of mixed seeds and throw them in the dirt and, you know, it's going to spring up for you. But if you sort of cultivate it, you will get a useful Twitter network. The information's definitely out there. It's just a matter of following, of finding it and, and following. Um, Steve's mentioning using the Add This tool. Um, that's a handy tool, and um, that's actually a tool that we have built into our websites here at uh, North Dakota State University, where I'm uh, located, um, so that uh, people can easily reshare uh, our information on social media. Uh, let's see. And uh, Steve has, has mentioned that in using uh, Twitter uh, in a disaster for extension resources, that's something that we have experience with here in uh, North Dakota as well. And that is a very good use to get real-time information out there.
Um, if you let's see, I'm looking at Peggy's question here. I know I'm about five minutes behind, guys, but uh, bear with me. I believe I missed. If you think someone tweet did something you wanted to tweet, would there be a way to search or no? Thanks. Okay. Um, well, first of all, I would say don't worry about it because you have different followers than that person has. Um, you don't share the exact same audience. Um, now, we probably have more people in common in terms of the people who follow us right now with new, if you're new to Twitter and you're in the Twitter cohort because we're all following each other. So it might seem a little weird um, to see that, to see a resource pop up three or four times in the, with the Twitter cohort hashtag. But don't worry about that for now. Um, as you move forward, you know, everybody's going to kind of go into their own subject matter and build their own geographic network and, and uh, topical network. And so that will be less the case, Peggy. So, you, so your followers are going to be way different than my followers. Um, and so if we both tweet the same thing, that's okay. We're going to be reaching some of the same people, but we're also going to be reaching different people, each of us. Um, but if you are curious, is like, I wonder who has tweeted this before. Um, I guess unless one of the other guides have a better way of knowing that, you know, my thought would be just to use Twitter search. So if there's something, you know, if it's a news story or a blog post that has a particular headline, um, you might take the keywords out of that headline and just search those um, on Twitter and see uh, if they uh, come up. And uh, that, that would be my first thought, and I guess I don't have a, a better one, a better idea, unless one of the guides want to jump in here and, and provide one. Let's see. So, Victor, I don't know if you have your microphone in, but I see that you say you started using Tame It. Oh, so Tame What's It actually Tame it? takes uh, all of my followers and people that I follow, and then it kind of shows me the top uh, links or URLs that are being shared amongst them and it does it for either like a 24-hour period all the way oh, down okay. to the latest hour. So it's kind of a cool way of learning what's what's trending amongst your own, um, um, you know, whatever you're following. Yeah, that's very cool. So um, for people listening on the recording, if you can't see the chat, it's just uh, tame, T-A-M-E dot I-T. Um, that sounds like a very cool tool. I have not known about that one, so thank you very much for sharing that. Um, and Polly has, has said to get my network going, I searched hashtags of one topic and then looked at people posting there. Also look at who they are following and who follows them. Great tips there, thanks. And, um, and Steve has shared a slide share of a Twitter presentation that uh, uh, he did a few years ago. Um, I won't share the whole URL of that, but if you go to www.slideshare.net slash snewman7118, you will be able to track that one down in Steve's slide sets on SlideShare. Okay. All right. I think we're just about to the end of our hour here. Yeah. So... Um, Lists, actually, are, uh, Steve is asking, are you planning to cover lists? And we have had some talk about lists, of course, because we have our Twitter cohort 2013 list out there. So we've talked about it a little bit. I just uh, finished a quick little video uh, that I posted this morning on how to, um, how to uh, add people to lists in Twitter and in, in Hootsuite and also... Um, how to uh, add that list as a, uh, I call it a column, because it looks like a column, but I guess Hootsuite calls it a stream. So how to add lists as a stream um, in Hootsuite. So uh, that is in the uh, syllabus. And speaking of the syllabus, uh, here are the things that we're asking you to work on this week before our next meeting. Um, Resharing tweets that you find valuable using uh, some different reshare methods. You know, I don't think there's anything wrong with with experimenting and playing around. So you've got we've talked about this uh, in past meetings. You've got just your standard retweet on Twitter, where you're not editing anything, you're not doing anything. You just click retweet, and it goes out to all of your followers who hadn't already seen that tweet. 
Um, the quote, which I showed you an example of that one of you used um, this past week where there's a quotation marks around it and that allows you to add some stuff yourself and make it clear uh, that that is separate uh, from, uh, from the, the tweet itself. Um, you can do the, the retweet style that we've talked about before using the RT. Um, so instead of just the retweet button, you can edit that tweet and put RT and then the, the username of the person who originally sent the tweet. Um, that's another way to do it. And then replies. And some of you probably already have some experience with replies. We've been using them quite a bit uh, when, you're, uh, when you're asking questions or answering questions. And that's when you put a username at the very beginning of the tweet before any, anything else. And what that does is make that tweet visible only to people who are following you and the person that you are replying to. Um, and so messing around with those and experimenting with them, I'll give you some experience uh, doing those things different ways. Um, of course, watch the tweets uh, with the Twitter cohort hashtag. And where appropriate, um, jump into the conversations. I was very, uh, very happy to see that um, some of the questions in the Twitter cohort are not being uh, answered just exclusively by our guides, but also by other Twitter cohort members. That's what building a network's about, folks. We're all helping each other um, and really becoming a community. That's great. Um, prepare to talk about advantages and disadvantages of each of the reshare methods as you go through them. Kind of think about that. It's like, this is what I liked about it. This is what I didn't like about it. We'll, we'll see if we can talk about that a bit in next week's meeting. Um, watching managing your Twitter stream, that's the video that I talked about that talks about lists. Um, and then after you watch that, if you can uh, find, besides the Twitter cohort 2013 list, um, maybe you can go out and see if you can find a list. And you can search Twitter for lists as well um, by keywords and things like that. Or you can uh, look into the profiles of people um, that you already follow and see if they've created any lists that you would like to follow. And so you can find those, subscribe to them, add them to a stream in Hootsuite and kind of get some idea about that. And then we've got a couple other materials, just a couple of blog posts about building community with Twitter. So trying to pull some people together into a network just like we're doing with the Twitter cohort. And about Twitter chats. And Twitter chats use hashtags to uh, connect a real-time conversation. And it's pretty, pretty interesting. We've mentioned some of the popular Twitter chats before, uh, like egg chat um, and garden chat we've mentioned in these meetings. So catch up session tonight. If you need some more help or you have other questions that you can get answered today, that's 9 p.m. Eastern, uh, same way that you connected to this meeting. Um, post your questions to Twitter using the Twitter cohort hashtag. There's a list of at least some of the uh, Twitter uh, cohort guides and their usernames, so you can uh, contact us directly uh, using, uh, you know, by mentioning us in a tweet or uh, by direct, mess direct messaging us. And we haven't talked much about direct messaging, but we, we will uh, talk about that as well. But if you want to direct message somebody uh, that you follow, uh, you can just use the DM uh, instead of like RT, you type big D, big M space their username and that will be like a like an almost like an email via Twitter. Um, and of course there's buttons. You'll see buttons in Hootsuite uh, for direct messaging people as well. So there we go. I'm out of breath. Any other questions? All right. Well, thanks, everybody. I really appreciate your time. Um, we'll see you on Twitter and may catch up with you tonight uh, at 9 Eastern for the catch-up session. Otherwise, uh, we'll talk to you again next week at this same time. Have a great week.